All right, let's sing it out on the first. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Sing it out on the last. Sweet hour of prayer. We'll sing the first and the last. Let's sing it out on the first. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. That calls me from a world of care. appreciate that. We got people coming in off the soul and bus. Let's just sing two verses of number one in your book, and we'll sing My Savior's Love. We'll sing the first and the last verse on that one, and then we're going to go to prayer right after that. Thanks for being in prayer meeting tonight. Let's sing it out. Ready? I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and one 
wonder how he can love me. Sinner condemned unclean. Sing it now. Oh, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul. How marvelous, how is my Savior's love for me. When with the ransomed in glory, his face I at last shall see. Twill be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful, and my soul shall ever be. for me you can be seated we're going to go to prayer here in just a moment appreciate everybody being here tonight thank god for the opportunity to be in church and master clubs are just going on appreciate all of our master club workers and children involved with that and some of us went out on the uh, team witnessing bus there and had a good time. I didn't expect it to be raining there a little bit. I thought I was going to freeze to death. And had a good time visiting. And uh, Nick and Jamie were together. And they were able to lead a lady to the Lord tonight out soul winning. So thank God for that. I had a good visit. And um, got to talk to a, a young man who had been here to our church before. And uh, he had come with Rick Rananella many years ago. He's a 24-year-old young man, and he had also been here for Tyler Bronski's funeral. I didn't know that. I started to talk to him about an illustration, and he said, well, you said that at the funeral. And that's when I realized he had been here. So it was a divine appointment and got to talk to somebody and about the Lord, and a different lady got to talk to about the Lord. So it's great privilege when we get to tell people about Jesus, that's for sure, and a great, great privilege. I thank God for other people that have been saved this week. Uh, that's that's awesome. My uh, son-in-law Mike had the opportunity to lead a man to the Lord at the Verizon store, and just a divine appointment where God steps in, and that's what we need to be doing. You know, whatever number of people say, no, I had uh, a Quan with me tonight when we were visiting, and I had a guy. He answered the door and he said, "Yeah, he said I go to church every day," and I thought he was being sarcastic. He said, this is my church, and he was standing inside his house and saying whatever other crazy things. So uh, that's how that happened tonight. You have those type people, but then you have other people that are looking for the Lord. So we're going to go right to prayer tonight. I want you to pray for Dr. Clarence Sexton. He's been in the hospital for three weeks and is dealing with uh, a lot of intense illness, lungs and kidneys, just infection, and, and pray that God helps him. They moved him to a different hospital. There had been slight improvement but he pastors in Tennessee, if you don't know him. And he used to pastor in New Jersey a long time ago. And he's a friend of ours. And he's there at the Temple Baptist Church in Powell, Tennessee, Crown College. So you pray for Dr. Sexton that God would raise him up. Gary McNona, and Gary was in our church for many years. And he's, uh, he's had health issues for a long time. Be praying for him. He's got surgery going on. And then I talked to Taja on the phone this week, and she got some really good reports. She's a young lady, been dealing with her cancer, and uh, had some really, really great reports. They've got one thing they're slightly concerned about, but they think it's fine. And so that's an answer to prayer. And I want to thank everybody who prayed for her, continue to pray for her, that God would help her. Matt's not here tonight. Uh, Matt Rooley, but I want you to pray for him. I, he was here on Sunday. He's had pancreatic cancer for a long time, and he told me Sunday he wasn't feeling well. And so you pray that God would help him. Let's pray for uh, our church so we see more souls saved and more lives changed. And let's pray for our people that are new to the church, newly saved, that they would grow in the Lord. Pray for all of our ministries, that God would bless all of the different ministries. And let's be praying that God would help us pray for the couples retreat and um, pray that God would help us. The Russos are here tonight. Raise your hand, Brother Mr. Russo. All right, they're here with us. 
And then the Gomez's are here, back here. You raise their hand. And Brother Ms. Gomez, and appreciate them. And the Gomez are speaking to our Spanish couples. Russo is speaking to our English couples. Glad to have them with us here in church tonight. Let's go to prayer. If you're our guest, please make yourself at home. We're no rush for the prayer time. It's a house of prayer. You can use the altar. You can pray with your spouse. You can kneel and pray, stand and pray, sit and pray as the Lord leads you. And uh, go ahead and pray. Whatever God's put on your heart, and that God would work, and that God would help, let's pray about these things. Again, don't forget to pray for Dr. Sexton, that God would help him. A lot of other people dealing with a lot of other prayer issues. You just, whatever the Lord puts on your heart for them, God would help them.
Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in church tonight. And God, I and we come into your presence asking for the forgiveness of any sin in our hearts. Lord, I pray you especially forgive us of any pride or uncleanness. And we pray for cleansing. Lord, we do worship you as our God. Lord, we are amazed by how awesome you are. And you know all things and you're everywhere and you can do all things. You're our Lord and our God. And Lord, you're holy, holy, holy. And Lord, we praise you. We thank you for all the blessings in our lives. Lord, thank you for what you did for us on Sunday with World Missions Day and for stirring our hearts. And Lord, I thank you for people that have been saved this week. Lord, I thank you for this lady that got saved tonight, Allison. And God, I thank you for witnesses that were made. And God, we thank you for the protection you've provided. Thanks for all the many blessings and in our lives. And Lord, we are grateful. And Lord, we praise and thank you that we can come to you in prayer and that you promised in your word to hear us. And Lord, we claim those promises tonight. And we believe that you hear us and that you can help us. I do pray for our sick. I pray you be with them and I pray you give them grace. And I pray that you would help them. And Lord, I pray that you would be with those dealing with cancer and that you would especially help them. God, I pray that you bless each ministry of this church. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to see more souls saved and more lives changed. I pray for Brother Mike preaching in Philadelphia tonight. I pray you be with him and anoint him, fill him with the Holy Ghost. I pray that you put a touch on everything we're doing here. Please help the couples retreat. I pray that you bless our offering tonight. And I pray that everything that's said and done here will give you glory and honor and praise. And we pray in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name. Amen. All right. Well, if it's your happy birthday, come on up here real quickly. We're going to sing to all the birthday people. We missed it last week also. So if it was last week or this week, come running this way. Don't hesitate. And uh, Victor, looks like your boys are calling you out. Who else? Last week, this week, all the birthday people. Come on, come on, come on. And we're going to sing. A little bit of delayed reaction. We're making it. Here we go. Who else? Oh, we got all young ones here. Where's all the old heads? Some of you had birthdays. Ah, oh, yes. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Ready? Let's sing to this crowd. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Give them a hand as they head down. They're headed down. Let's all stand. Y'all can go ahead down. Go ahead. Come on. Let's all stand. Uh, teen, I deaf are staying in here, and our Spanish are staying in here. I didn't have Brother Carlos up here tonight. I apologize. Uh, but we'll have our deaf and Spanish say, teens that are going to teen church. We are going to have teen church this evening, all right? Let's sing while they're headed out. What a mighty God we serve. Now, we're going to clap a little bit. You children, help me out with this. All right, if you don't know it, just hum along. You'll learn it. Here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. What a mighty God we serve. Come on now. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Sounds like a funeral. Come on now. We can do better than that. Sing it out. Ready? What a mighty God we serve. Adore him, what a mighty God we serve. One last time, I feel like we're almost there. How many of you have never sung this before? Let me see your hand. Look at that. A bunch of you adults never sung it before. No wonder. We're doing well though. You're doing great. Ready? Here we go. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth. What a mighty God we serve. 
Let's, let's, we got to teach these adults some more of these uh, camp songs. Let's sing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I've got them on my mind. Brother Gomez, when you're hooked up, come on up here. Ready? Here we go. Jesus, 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 I've got them on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got them on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got them on my mind. Oh, I've got Jesus on my mind. Now you adults here, that you adults here, you can't you can't miss that. If you don't, if you're wondering what they're yelling out, they're yelling out their bus numbers from the bus routes, right? That's what you're hearing. Little competition here, all right? When I read my Bible, ready? When I read my Bible, I've got them on my mind. When I read my Bible, I've got them on my mind. When I read my Bible, I've got them on my Oh, I've got Jesus on my mind. When you see me praying, I've got them on my mind. When you see me praying, I've got them on my mind. When you see me praying, I've got them on my Oh, I've got Jesus on my mind. Yeah, you can be seated. And it's good to be in church tonight. You didn't know you're getting in on a bus rally, did you, Brother Gomez? Well, Brother Gomez is a Spanish pastor at the First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana. And he was here for our men's retreat back in mm, March, April, May, somewhere along there. I can't. All the months just run together. And anyway, he came. Mrs. Gomez, she's been here before for the ladies' renewal, and she's preached to our ladies before. And the ladies do preach. They are we just ladies speakers. No, they preach. And uh, we really should probably put them up here. But anyway, uh, I appreciate Brother Gomez coming in, and he and Mrs. Gomez are going to be speaking to our Spanish couples. And tonight, Brother Gomez is going to preach in English and some Spanish. He's going to keep everybody in on this. So uh, we're going to be listening here to the Word of God. And God ordered it, allowed it. He came in and got off the plane, came right and preached to the Vision Baptist College Chapel today, preached a good message about how we need to beware. And it was good, tremendous, some good help for that. I don't know, maybe he'll preach that tonight. All of us could use it. But whatever God's put on his heart, he's going to preach. And I appreciate his heart for our church and um, he's this first time he's officially been here in a service with us, but I appreciate it. And uh, California boy originally? Oh, yes, raised in California. But anyway, and now in Indiana. And so I, I, it would take the call of God to move me from people complain about California, but they just don't know Indiana. <laughs> so anyway, each to their own, but he's there because of the will of God, and God brought him into the Spanish church there at the perfect time, and God's blessed him and his family, and we appreciate it. So I want us all to give a good hearing tonight to the Word of God. I'm sure you've had a busy day, and our minds can be all over the map, but let's get in tune with whatever it is that God's wanting to say tonight in our hearts, because we definitely need the preaching, and uh, this and and Pastor Clark wanted him to preach tonight, and Brother Gomez preached, and I'll have him preach, and so that's what we're doing tonight, and we want to listen. All right, preacher, you are up. Make yourself at home. Thanks for being here. Appreciate Thank you, preacher. Thank what you, a privilege. Well, good evening. I'm glad to be here this evening, and I'm so thankful to be here with my wife, and uh, she does preach. She does yeah. preach, <clears throat> but uh, what a blessing it is here to be with you and, and get to be a part of... Um, a small extension of the ministry of the Clarks, and I, I'm just so thankful for the influence and, and the blessing that uh, this church has been to us, particularly for many years, uh, our family, and, uh, and just uh, even our, in our time there in California as we grew up in the, in the work of the Lord with our children being small, and now they're all grown up, but we're still serving the Lord there in Hammond, Indiana, and it, takes, it does take a calling of God, and we're thankful for for uh, First Baptist Church of Hammond and what God has done there. We love it. We love Hammond, Indiana. Every time we land in Chicago, we're so thankful to be back home. There's only one thing we, can't, we don't like, and those are the, the trains, but we'll, we'll get, we'll, you know, we're, we're okay. But uh, I just want to say thank you uh, for the opportunity, Pastor, for allowing me to stand behind this wonderful pulpit. Uh, quiero agradecer a los hermanos que están aquí también. Hicieron la excepción de venir de servicio en español e inglés para estar aquí. Voy a tratar lo mejor posible para enseñar bilingüe. No es fácil, pero voy a tratar de incluir algo de lo que voy diciendo este, en español para que ustedes agarren los, los puntos principales. Pero es un privilegio estar aquí con ustedes también, hermano Carlos y a la familia. Dios les bendiga. 
Well, I'm just excited to be here today, and I want to be a blessing. I know it's midweek service, and I know that um, uh, most of us have come from work and ready to go back home, and some have maybe not eaten. Uh, maybe some have eaten a little bit more than what we should have, but uh, nonetheless, let's go to the Word of God in book of John, chapter 11. Book of John, chapter 11. I want to send greetings from Pastor Wilkerson and, and the church family at our First Baptist Church. Uh, we're so thankful for, for the Clarks and how they have been a blessing throughout the years. Uh, every time they come through um, to be a blessing there at First Baptist, we're just very grateful and very thankful for good friends in the ministry and great examples for us um, in, the, in the Lord. J John chapter 11, please. John chapter 11. We prayed much for your church family during the time of COVID. Uh, we, on a daily ba basis, we, we knew what uh, this church particularly was going through and and uh, we were following right along the videos and the announcements, and uh, we prayed personally and, and also collectively as a church family, and uh, we, we, we learned to care much for your church family during that time, uh, and, uh, and just it's a blessing to be here and see this church going strong and going forward, and despite everything that happened, and, and uh, even though COVID hit, hit us all particularly the same way, uh, but this, this church kind of had a little bit more of uh, difficulties um, in, in light of everything that happened over here, but we were, we were praying for you and want you to know that. Um, le estoy diciendo a la iglesia que estuvimos orando por esta iglesia en particular, uh, especialmente durante COVID, que está, estaban pasando por unas necesidades y, y unos ataques más, más severos, más serios, y, y estuvimos orando por ellos y, y por esta iglesia, y nos enamoramos de ustedes en, este, en esos días, pues eso es lo que hace la oración. Y damos gracias a Dios por ustedes. If you're, there, if you're there with me in John chapter 11, I just want to read to you just uh, four, four or five verses there at the beginning of chapter 11. And I'd like I'd ask you just remain seated there as I read the word of God. I'll pray and we'll get started. Juan capítulo 11, nomás voy a leer versículos 1 al 5. Vamos a orar y dar comienzo. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany and, and town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with an ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Uh, we know this story very well. I'm sure that there's been so many different messages come from it. There, there's, uh, rich, it's rich in doctrine and, uh, and, and just it really highlights the power of resurrection and the power of Jesus Christ and his, and his divine uh, you know, attributes as God and, and they're manifested in this chapter. It's a beautiful chapter of the Word of God, beautiful story, one of my favorites. But uh, <clears throat> uh, there, there is within this story um, something that has really been a blessing to me personally, and I, and I draw it from these first few verses of the chapter this, that uh, I want to share with you this evening, a, a thought that uh, has been a help to me personally. Este capítulo 11 de Juan es muy, muy popular, muchos mensajes salen de este pasaje, mucha doctrina de este pasaje, ya que um, exalta la persona del Señor Jesucristo y su Deidad, Y, este, y hay mucho que aprender, pero quiero traer algo a ustedes que para mí ha sido de mucha ayuda personalmente. Me ha ayudado bastante. Uh, I noticed in there in the beginning of the chapter when we hear the story in Mary and Martha, they, they knew the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a matter of fact, this, this particular family was different than all the rest. There's, there's uh, three occasions in the Bible that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, goes and visits them at their house. This is one of the, the three. And uh, even though the Lord had been in many others' homes, but for some reason, this particular family uh, had caught the Lord's attention uh, so much as to visit them multiple times. And we see it in the Gospels, and we see it here in the book of John. And uh, Martha and Mary had a special relationship, as well as Lazarus, with the Lord Jesus Christ. So much that when Lazarus was sick... They took advantage, per se, of that relationship, that, that trust, that confidence they had. And they sent notice to the Lord, and which really wasn't too far away. But they sent notice to him, thinking that maybe because of our 
our, our, our bond because of our friendship, our special friendship, because he loves Lazarus. And no doubt if we send this, this message to him, he will stop everything he's doing, no matter what he's doing, and he'll come very quickly over to where we are. He knows where we are. He'll come and he'll help us. He'll heal Lazarus. And we won't get to the awful place that we can potentially get to with this sickness. And we see it there in verse number three where it literally says that therefore the sisters, his sisters sent unto him saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And I, I feel like he, they, they threw that little extra, he whom thou lovest, kind of reminding him, hey, there's a special bond here and we, we trust that you'll understand that this is not just the next person that's sick. This is Lazarus. And between verse number three and verse number four, God changed their plans. Vemos aquí en capítulo 11 como Marta y María, ellas mandaron aviso al Señor Jesucristo. Era una familia en particularmente especial, ya que la Biblia dice que, que Jesucristo uh, había visitado esta familia no una vez, pero tres veces. Una de las únicas familias que el Señor visita de la misma forma. Y este, había una relación especial entre ellos y eh, Marta y María lo sabían y por eso cuando mandaron aviso ya que Lázaro estaba enfermo mandaron aviso a mandar por él que no estaba muy lejos ellas confiaban de que Jesucristo al saber que Lázaro estaba enfermo iba a dejar todo lo que estaba haciendo iba a parar su mundo y venir corriendo a ayudarle a Lázaro pero del versículo 3 al versículo 4 el Señor cambió los planes. Notice in verse number four, this is in response to that message that was sent to him. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. And if you notice even more in verse number five, it's almost like this verse really didn't have to belong here. It, did, it wasn't, it was kind of thrown in by the Holy Spirit just to affirm, just to to, to, to take away any doubt that the Lord loved Lazarus. It says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He was about to turn their world upside down. He, he had made the decision to take this sickness, this situation, and turn it to serve for his glory, for the glory of God. Martha and, and Mary were, were sure that Jesus would help them. That he would, I mean, it was Martha and Mary. They, they had attended to him. It was, it was Mary that had, that had broken her alabaster. It was, it was this whole connection between them. They, they had served, they, they, Martha had served him and Mary had been at his feet. And, and, and it was a, there was a, a history here and there was no doubt the Lord would come and help them. But the Lord changed their plans. El Señor cambia los planes de estas mujeres que ellas tenían la confianza porque tenían una relación con Él. Más allá de lo normal. Había una historia, un historial. Marta había servido al Señor. María estaba a los pies de Jesús y ellas estaban seguras que, que de seguro Jesús iba a venir y ayudarle a su hermano. Pero el Señor cambió los planes de ellas. Ellas. I'd like to talk to you tonight on the subject of when God changes our plans. Cuando Dios cambia nuestros planes. Father in heaven, please bless tonight's message. Help me, Lord, as I, as I intend and, and try to be a help and just a blessing and help me to communicate properly in both languages as much as possible. Help that not to affect the message that you would want your people that you so much love to hear tonight. Father, I know not these precious families personally. I don't know what their burdens are, and I don't know why you would want me to preach this message tonight particularly. But if there's a reason here tonight, there's a family or two or three that needed this message. Father, would you please use it for your glory? Padre, por favor, bendice el mensaje en tu palabra. Ponemos todo en tus manos en Cristo Jesús. Amen. And typically, we live our lives uh, relatively in control of our circumstances. 
that surround us. We, we make an effort. As a matter of fact, we wear it as a, as a badge of pride to be in control of, of our lives. And we make sure that our budgets and our accounts and our banks uh, banking accounts are in order. And, and our home is in order. And our, and our daily uh, tasks and our calendars, you know, we, we, we make it an effort to be as part of our character, as part of our DNA, as part of our Christianity. And, and we want to please the Lord this way. And, and, but somehow, sometimes... We, uh, we lose control of our situations, uh, of our circumstances. And typically it's when we least expect it. Typically it's when we, we, uh, we, we most think that we are in control that God decides to change our plans. Uh, we, we arrive at those moments when our plans and even our prayers and our desires are not coming out as we ask and hope to be with the Lord and we begin to react incorrectly as children of God we begin to doubt at times and wonder is God up there is God listening to me and as Martha and Mary no doubt felt and we they expressed it when Jesus finally came to them they said you know they basically told him you came too late it was almost like Martha and Mary said you know this was us asking you to come this wasn't strangers where were you and I find it to be that sometimes, even in my life, I, I, I ask God for, for things and, that are urgent to me that maybe are very private in my home and in my own family and my own children, maybe a personal need. And, and I, I pray for others. I, I serve others. And I'm, I try to be as best uh, as a possible servant to others as God would want us to be. But at times I get to places in my life that I lose control of my personal circumstances. And I come to God and I say, Lord, could you please answer this prayer? Lord, could you please supply this need? Lord, I, I come to you now on my behalf. I've asked for others and I've seen you bless others. Would you please help me, Lord? I, I, I don't deserve it, but, but Father, I, I no doubt, and, and maybe my pride tells me, and even in my prayers it comes out, and no doubt God knows this. I, I kind of feel like, well, Lord, look at all I've done for you. Look what I'm doing for you. Look, look who's asking, Lord. And so many times the Lord has taken my circumstances and just literally from one verse to the next, from one moment to the next, from one phone call to the next, from one moment in time to the next moment in time, the Lord decides to change our plans. Pienso a veces cuando en mi propia vida pienso que estoy en control de mis circunstancias, nos esforzamos en tomar control de nuestras circunstancias, queremos tener control de nuestras vidas porque es el cristianismo y es un orgullo, es un esfuerzo cristiano que hacemos de tener control de nuestras finanzas, de nuestros hijos, de nuestros, de nuestros días diarios y es algo bueno de hacer, pero de vez en cuando perdemos control de nuestras circunstancias. Y se nos olvida y, y venimos a Dios y casi apelando a Dios por nosotros mismos. Ya que hemos orado por otros, ya que hemos uh, suplicado por otros. Hemos visto a otros Dios ser bende bendecir. Hemos visto milagros en otros hogares. Hemos ayudado a otros y, y en ocasiones venimos a Dios diciendo Señor. Ahora yo estoy en necesidad. Yo, yo necesito que tú me ayudes Señor. Yo te estoy pidiendo por mi necesidad. Y casi casi yo creo que Dios lo sabe y. No es oculto a Dios nuestro orgullo quizás diciéndole a Dios Señor mira todo lo que yo he hecho por ti. Mira quién soy, quién te, mira quién te está pidiendo yo soy el que sirvo a otros, yo soy el que ayuda a otros. Esta vez Señor yo te estoy pidiendo yo creo que ese es el sentir de Marta y María cuando ellas mandaron a avisar por Jesús. Le mandaron a decir Lázaro al que tú amas. When Mary, Mary and Martha send out the notice and they said the one that thou lovest it's almost like like saying hey let me just throw this little extra line in the in this message just to make sure that he understands who is asking for this this petition I I I, uh, I think of of our our dear precious pastor pastor Wilkerson miss miss Wilkerson they've been such an influence in our lives they they they've known us we've known them since we were 17 years of age uh, uh, 16 years of age, my wife, and, and uh, they were our, 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 our Christian school supervisors in our, in our, in our Christian school, their um, ACE room, and, and uh, I was in my senior year, and, uh, and uh, I got to know them then, and, and, and I'm just, we've, we've known each other for so long, and we grew up knowing the Wilkersons, we, we grew up watching them uh, serve, and since they were 24 years of age, and they've never changed their, 
they, they, they're the same people always. If you know Pastor Wilkerson, he's, he's such a genuine Christian, such a, such a great godly uh, example. And I, I'm not saying that because he's my pastor and, and he's my boss. I'm not trying to earn any points. He's just, that's who he is. I love him. We love him so much, love him and his family so much. They're almost family to us. We're just a little different color skin, but we're family nonetheless. But uh, I just, you know, we watched, my wife and I would watch Pastor Wilkerson walk into school at times and, and carry, carry a little Tyler in his hand. He'd literally put his feet on his hand and, and, and he'd, he'd balance him through, through, the, through the class. As we all did our studies, he'd walk through the classroom carrying Tyler in his hand. And we remember seeing that over and over and he was just impressed on how much he loved his son. We watched him grow up to, to the time when they left out to serve the Lord and elsewhere. And we came back to First Baptist uh, in Long Beach there and we came back to work underneath them. Tyler was grown up and he was a, a preteen and we watched him grow up and, and watched the family serve the Lord as the pastor of the church and and just what a blessing what God did there in that time uh, under his ministry was nothing but a miracle. God, if you know the story of that church, uh, God did wonders there through that family and through many that served the Lord there. God, to his glory, all that. But uh, I remember the, 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 the Saturday morning that we arrived to prayer meeting. And it was a Saturday morning, 7 o'clock uh, men's prayer meeting. We gathered there and everything was different that morning. There was men very quiet, very somber. It was different to... The coffee wasn't running and there was no normal talking as, as normal would be. And, and uh, James Allen, which was the assistant pastor at that time, he, he stood up and he gave an announcement. And we noticed we were sitting there waiting for, to begin. It was about probably a group of about 80 to 90 men. And, and we noticed they talked a little bit between him and a couple other assistant pastors. And he took the pulpit and he gave a very difficult announcement that morning. And he said, I need to announce to you that over the night there was a family along taking Tyler Wilkerson up north to college, uh, making a, dropping off somebody at the college. And the car rolled over and Tyler's gone. He's in heaven. It was so, I still to the moment, I, I, I still, those emotions come back. It was just a, such a shock. We were sitting there thinking, no, this, this can't be. This, 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 out of all the families we know, this, surely this, this is not true. And as he gave the announcement, he said, we're going to have to just pray. And, and we're not going to go through the normal. We're not going to have preaching. We're not going to have the coffee and bread. And we're just going to pray. And, and just we want you to go home and tell your families. And, and if you can make it back to soul winning, uh, pray for the family. Pray for the workers. They're getting up right now, he said. And they have to notify each and every one of their other children as they wake up. And I left the prayer meeting and I went to my office as we dismissed and I called my wife that morning and I said, babe, I said, I'm on my way home to pick you up, but I need to tell you that Tyler's gone. And I remember her response said, no, what do you, she said, that can't be, no, no. What are we going to do? I said, well, just get ready. We're going to come back to the soul winning meeting. We need to stay faithful we got to come back soul winning. And sure enough, we went for that. For, for, I went for my family and came back. All the road up was just quiet. Our children kept asking questions. They knew something was up, and we let them know. And they were all young and small, but they, still the, the older ones understood a little bit what was going on. And we arrived at the soul winning meeting, and it was jam-packed. It was full, the, more than usual, and people notified people. And that little chapel there that fit about 200 people was, was more like 300 that morning. And we were all trying to sing those those Saturday morning soul winning songs, trying to get ready to go soul winning. And, uh, and as things were developing and getting ready, uh, uh, trying to sing, all of a sudden, a uh, pastor and his family walk in on the side door into that soul winning meeting. And they interrupt the service and pastor takes the pulpit. And he greets the crowd and he thanks everyone and says, thank you for being here. These are my friends. You are our family. And this is when we most need you. Thank you for coming to soul winning. 
And they stayed and they sang with us and we left that room and no one could leave, no one could believe that they were there with us soul winning and, and they hugged them and we all went up to them and, and did our best we can to, to love on them and we went out soul winning and I remember when the funeral service came and, and the, the auditorium was full, about a 1500 seat auditorium was full, we had other chapels uh, full to capacity and they just, people came from all over the nation to be there with them and I, I'll just never forget this, it really impacted my life, my family and I were sitting in the balcony and, and are with our children everyone there was weeping and weeping uncontrollably and just, just we were just, so, just hurting in our hearts for them, and we wanted to God to bless them, and and we'd see the family, the pastor's family out in front, and 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 the and the, the, in the casket in front, and it was an open casket, and no one dared, nobody wanted to go forward. They didn't know they didn't, how do we console them, how do we help them, and it was just such a sombering moment, difficult, and I have to admit to you that I was sitting in my heart, saying there, thinking. Lord, why this family? I was a youth pastor for 20 years. Uh, my wife and I served the Lord 20 years as uh, teens. And, and, and we've seen many young people, terrible situations happen, but never something like this. And then we'd find those others that didn't want anything to do with God and, and just hated God and hated church and, and just were just bad. And we're thinking, and I, and I have to confess to you, and I, and, I, and I feel ashamed for saying it, but I said to the Lord, Lord, why not one of those young men? And that's terrible to say. I remember pastor getting up in the service and thanking everyone for being there. And, and him saying, I'm going to attempt to sing a song. That a song that has been a help to my wife in these last few days. And she's asked for this song to be sung. And I'm going to attempt to sing it. And he started singing that wonderful song. Even in the valley, God is good. Even in the valley, he is faithful and true. And as he got through the chorus there, he couldn't continue singing, and his voice broke. And as soon as he broke, you can feel everyone in that auditorium just gasp, just, oh, just hurt. You don't, it was, it was just like we were just sitting at the edge of our, of our seat, just broken. You can hear the sobbing and the crying. And I, I was crying. I looked over at my wife. She was sobbing. Our children were sobbing. I looked at grown men just sobbing, just wanting to heal them and saying, Lord, help them. And as pastor tried to get through the song, he couldn't. And all of a sudden... Quickly, you see Mrs. Wilkerson get up from her front pew and pass the body, the, the, the casket of her son and run up the, the steps to the, to the side of her husband. And we believed that she was going to come and hug him and they were going to go and sit down. But she stood next to him and almost with a smile, with tears coming down her eyes, she hugged him and said, even in the valley, God is good. And both of them finished the song in front of all the people that were sobbing. It was them that, was, that were helping us. It was not us helping them. And you can see God's grace in their life. And I'll never forget that for the rest of my life, how much we hurt, but yet they're the ones that had lost the son. And I remember pastor saying, you know, we didn't expect this. We, didn't, we never dreamed that our son was 17 years of age. We can see him graduating. We can see him going off to Bible college. We can think of the day that would come to, for him to get married and, and have children and have give us our first grandchildren. But we didn't plan for this. We didn't understand why would God do this. But we decided that evening when we received the phone call from the coroner, when we understood what had happened, we hugged each other that night. And we decided that God would be good no matter what through this trial. You see, sometimes God changes our plans. And it is the moments where we... We long to, to escape. We long to, to gather our thoughts and, and just maybe redeem uh, the moment or time and, and fix things and correct things or even question things. Why have we gotten to here? Why, ha God, have you allowed this to happen? Is, was it my fault? Was it, wh what did we do wrong? We've been trying to do what's right. And Lord, we've been being faithful to church. We've been giving. We've been tithing. Haven't we checked? And you start checking. And, Lord, where have you failed you? And, and I've been so winning, Lord. I've been, I've been trying to please. Lord, what's wrong? Why? Where did I fail you? you and God says it's not so much that you failed me is that I am trying to use this circumstance to bring glory to my name and I'm entrusting in your hands this circumstance because I can believe that I can be glorified 
by your example. Perdone mis hermanos todo lo que conté sería imposible contarlo en este tiempo permitido del mensaje. Pero estoy recontando la historia de nuestro pastor cuando perdió su hijo. Y qué tan difícil fue. Que a veces Dios escoge lo más difícil para ser glorificado en nuestras vidas. When God changes our plans we have to remember number one. That God always arrives on time. And notice with verse number three there, uh, as Martha and Mary received the Lord Jesus, he says, verse number six, when he had hear, uh, heard, there, therefore, that we had, uh, he was sick, he about two days still in the same place where he, he was. And after that, he said to his disciple, let us go into Judea again. And he took his time. It would seem like he on purpose waited to get to where he needed to get to. And, and finally he arrives and, and Martha is the first one to receive him. And, 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 and she questions him and she meets him there at front and, and just tells him and says Martha and verse number uh, verse number 21 and then said Martha unto Jesus Lord if thou hadst been here my brother had not died and, and, and coincidentally Mary says the same thing to as Martha did without knowing that Martha had questioned in the same way this this sentiment was in both hearts Martha cuando vio el Señor Jesucristo llegar el Señor Jesucristo llegó Tarde, según Marta y María, ella, él no respondió y la Biblia aclara que él se tardó unos días más para llegar. Entonces Marta le contesta al Señor, le dice, Señor, si tú hubieras estado aquí, nuestro hermano Lázaro no hubiese muerto. Y María sin saber le dice lo mismo al Señor Jesucristo. Le dice, si, si, si tú hubieras estado aquí, nuestro hermano estuviera vivo. You see, the first thing that happens when we, when, when God changes our plans, when things go different than what we expect, when we're not in control, when, when things happen that uh, are our burdens or maybe trials come our way, we must remember that God always arrives in time. Uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we are told that, that God's time is a precious time. It's a beautiful time. God always arrives in time. God is never late. La Biblia dice en Ecclesiastes capítulo 3 que Dios siempre llega a tiempo que su tiempo es precioso, es hermoso su tiempo. The Lord came and just in time as a child, as a son, as a shepherd, I'm sorry, as a sheep to save that which was lost. Dios vino a justo tiempo para salvar a aquellos que estaban perdidos como un cordero, como un sacrificio. And I'm so thankful that God in our time, in our life, in just the right time, and saved us. See, he sent someone to knock on our door, someone to reach us, someone to give us a gospel track, someone to do something. I'm so thankful that God has never, ever come late in my life. He's always come just in time. Doy gracias a Dios que siempre Dios ha llegado a tiempo en mi vida. Es el día de nuestra salvación. Como Dios nos cambió, nos alcanzó al justo tiempo. Antes de que todo se perdiera, Dios llegó a tiempo. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, but when the fulfillment of time came, God sent his son born of a woman and born under the law. I just say this, God never is late. We need to learn to wait on the Lord, even when God changes our plans. And we think that maybe he's not answering our prayer. Lord, where are you? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there where you're praying and you're praying and you have a need? And, and you've done everything in your part. You've fasted. You've prayed. You, you've sacrificed the cat. No, I'm just kidding there. <laughs> you've done everything you can to do what you're supposed to do. Just to line up with the Lord and say, Lord, would you help me? Would you answer? this prayer you 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 you've stopped watching tv you 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 know you you stayed away from your your indulging and and your pleasures and you just lord i just want to be consecrated i need you to answer this prayer and then that time comes and god doesn't answer the prayer and we think that he hasn't answered the prayer in time but yet it seems to me and i've learned that no matter what happens in my life It could come maybe just a month or two or even six months or even a year later when he answers that same prayer in just the perfect time. And it always comes back in my mind and say, Lord, you did answer my prayer. 
I'm sorry for the bad attitude, Lord. I'm sorry for my complaining. I'm sorry for my, my, my bickering, Lord. And you did answer my prayer. You did hear my prayer. It wasn't in my timing, but it was in your timing. And your timing is always much better, Lord. Thank you for answering my prayer. God never arrives late. The second thing we must learn. La primera cosa, hermanos, antes de continuar, número dos, es que Dios nunca llega tarde. The second thing is that God always cares. Dios siempre le importa. We find here in this, in this wonderful story in verse number 21, the Bible says, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Uh, it was Martha telling the Lord, Did you not love Lazarus? Did you not care enough to come? And we find it in this beautiful story where, where the Lord says, uh, where the, the, the story tells us that Jesus wept as he saw those around him weeping and, and hurt and, and, and without, without faith and hope. He wept and he hurt with them. And, and that tells me one thing that do, God does care. And that is the biggest lie of the devil when we're going through trials and difficulties. The devil will, will whisper in our ear, God doesn't care. Look what's going on to you. Look what's happening to you. Look what you're going through. Look at the trials look by, by now God should have answered and look all that you do in church and look how faithful you are and look how much you give and look how much you sacrifice and where's your God now how come he's allowing this problem in your life how come he's doing this to you and where's your God but let me remind you dear people that God does care for us the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9 that when he saw the multitudes he had compassion he does. Our God is a God of all comfort. He does care. Dios sí le importa, hermano. El diablo nos susurra en el oído y nos dice que quizás Dios no le importa su vida. Mira lo que te está pasando. Mira las dificultades, mira los problemas. ¿Por qué no Dios te contesta? ¿Por qué Dios no te ha ayudado a ti? ¿Por qué no te levanta de esta situación? Y creemos las mentiras del diablo cuando él nos dice que a Dios no le interesa. No, Dios sí le interesa. A Dios sí le importa. I remember quickly when we were young in Texas and serving the Lord there, going through some trials and trying to start a church there in, in, in Amarillo, Texas. We went through some hard times. Our children were, were young and we were just two years into it. We suffered a church split and it changed the, the dy dynamics of our ministry quite a bit. And we were faced with me having to work again um, full time uh, outside of church. And, 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 and we went through a trial. We had just purchased uh, our house and everything was going fine. The church was growing and based on our salary and based on everything, we, we can afford that. But then when all these things happened, it just really flipped our world upside down. And, and everything that I can successfully make from Monday through Friday was just going to the bills and it just wasn't enough. I remember my wife having to throw, help me a little bit with uh, working and she would throw a, a route, a, a newspaper route overnight. I don't know if you've ever done that, but that's, that's not fun. And she had a route of about 425 newspapers. And it was uh, particularly that during that time it was snowing. And... Um, it was snowing. I remember it was Saturday night. I had worked all day and I hadn't made any money. I, I worked in car sales. I, it was the only flexible job I can find to be able to serve the Lord and, and, and still make my visits and try and pass to the church. And I sold nothing that day. And we were going through trials and difficulties. And uh, that evening, there was no food in the pantry. There was no food in the fridge. And our children went to sleep hungry. And uh, I remember my little girls telling her, their mom, Mom, I'm hungry. And my, mom, my, my wife putting them to sleep, you know, trying to encourage them that, you know, if they were hungry, they'd wake up in the morning even more hungry and enjoy breakfast. And they thanked God and they went to sleep. And as she was out in the garage with a jacket on and, and uh, you know, the, it was cold outside and she could feel the cold. She was doing the newspaper. I was inside the living room trying to prepare my message. And, and, and preacher, I, as I opened the Bible there, it was late. It was like maybe 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night. I, I went through the, the Bible and from the beginning to the end. And I was trying to find 
something that I would be able to teach the people the next morning. And, and it was almost like the Bible was written in a different language because I couldn't get anything. And all I kept thinking was about my kids that went to sleep with no food. And I, was, I can think about those people that we had loved and served and helped and that backstabbed us, that betrayed us and split the church and hurt us so much. And uh, I can think of my wife outside preparing the newspaper because it was Saturday night for Sunday morning. She had to put all the coupons in it and just working that. And, and she's out there. It's midnight. And my kids are hungry, for trying to go to sleep. And I'm here. I can't get anything from the word of God. And I, I sat there in the living room. I felt so alone. I was but maybe 25, 26 years old. And I started to complain. I started feeling like, Lord, where are you? I said, come on, Lord, this, is, this can't be how the ministry is. We've come here. We've left everything behind. We left our family behind to come and serve here and to help others and, and, and to just be a help to people. We've been so winning. We've been faithful to preach your word. And this is, what, this is how you pay us. This is what we're going through. And I, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if this is how, 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 if this is how it's going to be, I, I know I can work. I know I can, I, can, I can provide for my home. I know I, my kids do not have to go to sleep with, with, with hunger in their stomach. And, and Lord, I, my wife doesn't have to work outside throwing newspaper this this is not fair lord I, why is this happening lord and i remember feeling my heart lord do you not care and i grab the bible and i say it shamefully i i'm embarrassed to say it that i closed the bible that night and i told the lord lord if this is the ministry that i don't want anything to do with it and i quit on god that night and I don't know how it was or what happened. My wife came in just that moment and it was almost like she heard me, overheard me or the Holy Spirit. She came in and she said, honey, what did you say? She came running to my side and she grabbed me and we hugged and she said, honey, no, God is not finished with us. God is faithful. He still wants to use your life. He still, I believe in my heart that he has great plans for your life. He wants to use your life. He is not finished with us. Don't say those words. God wants to use. He will bless us. And we prayed that night and I still was bitter in my heart. I got up the next morning and I tried to preach a message. I don't remember what I preached that day. No one got saved. No one came forward thanking me for the message. I walked out quickly from the church. On the way to home, we still hadn't eaten nothing. There was nothing to eat at home. My wife turned around and said, honey, what are we going to eat? I said, I don't know what we're going to eat. Just then, we received a phone call from our pastor back home. And he said, uh, Andy, how are, how's everything? And just like any young preacher, everything's great, pastor. And he said, you know, our church, we picked up a love offering for you. We're going to send your way 500 bucks for Christmas so you can do something special for the kids. And I said, well, thank you, pastor. We hung up the phone, and I told my wife, and, but we still had nothing to eat that day. We went home, and we got home, and I said, well, honey, see if you can put something together. She went into the kitchen to see if she can put something together. There's got to be some kind of quesadilla or some kind of tortilla or something. And just then, 30 minutes after, we heard a knock on the door. It was a young couple that we had won to Christ, discipled, and was being faithful to church. He came to the door. He said, Pastor, we were at the grocery store. We went to go pick up a rotisserie chicken, but God put in our heart to buy you all some groceries. We opened the door, and it was the front porch full of groceries. And they came in and filled the floor, the kitchen floor with groceries. I mean, they, they brought the good cereal. You know, the, the name brand, not the fake, the, <laughs> the fake kind of cereal. And our kids, we got to eat that day. We asked them to stay. They, they said, no, Pastor, we want you guys to enjoy it. They left, and I, I was still angry at God. I was still ashamed, embarrassed. That night came and went to church, came back home. The next morning, I got up at 6, 30, 7 o'clock to go to work. And on my way to work, I received another phone call from a pastor friend in Texas. And he said, Brother Andy, he said, when you came through just a few months ago, we gave you an offering, but we failed to give you this other portion that came in after you left. But I don't want to send it in the mail. I like to deposit it into your account because something tells me you need the cash right now. I 
At that time, I, I thanked the preacher and I understood finally. I understood finally, and I'm sorry, Lord, that God does care. I pulled the car over and I got on my knees. I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for doubting that you care for us because there's no way, no how that all this is happening behind the scenes and you did not care. You knew this weekend would come. You knew what I would say. You knew what we'd go through, but you were preparing everything. You were putting people's heart because you care. And let me remind you, young, let me remind you, young person, when you're going through difficulties, when you're going through trials, when you don't believe that no one's there to help you, God is already at work and God knows and God does care and God does love you and God does want to help you and God is in control. God does care. Perdóname, mi hermano, que es difícil traducir eso, pero quiero decirles que aún en sus peores momentos, cuando usted piensa y siente en su corazón que a Dios no le interesa y no le importa su, su vida, por las dificultades que le están pasando, Dios sí le importa. I, I have to close here quickly. Just let me give you these last thoughts here. God always sees what you and I cannot see. You see, Martha and Mary saw Lazarus dead. But God didn't see him dead. You see, he already saw that he was going to be alive. He already saw the stone moving. He already saw everything happening. It wasn't news to him. It, to them, it was the end. To them, it was an impossibility. To them, nothing's going to happen. El Señor, eh, eh, cuando venimos a esos momentos, Él ve lo que nosotros no alcanzamos a ver para Marta y María. Ellos estaban perdidos. No había esperanza. Lázaro lleve cuatro días muerto. No hay nada que se pueda hacer. Pero Dios miraba lo que ellos no alcanzaban a ver. It's important to remember that we, when we get to those places, when God changes our plans, that God always sees what we cannot see. Things that the eye did not see, nor ear heard, nor have they gone up in the heart of man are those which God has prepared for those who love him, the Bible says. Number four, quickly, God can always do the impossible. Amen. God can always do the impossible. Dios, número cuatro, puede hacer lo imposible. You see, Martha declared to Jesus, he's four days now dead. There's no way. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's just impossible. Maybe the third day. I mean, I, I maybe, uh, but four days, he's decomposed. It smells. There's no way. It's impossible. <laughs> but there's nothing impossible for God. It's nothing impossible. No hay nada imposible para Dios. Por más que parece que la situación está muerta. Dios nunca llega tarde. Dios le importa. Dios puede. Dios puede hacer lo imposible. Follow me here. I'm about to close here. Just think about it for a moment. Maybe you're having marital problems. And you think that you're down at the end of the road and you think nothing can happen and nothing will resurrect this situation. We are down to the, to the end here and there's nothing. There's no coming back. There's no returning. The problems cannot be solved. There's no marriage in the world that will help our situation. This problem, this sin, this hurt, this pain, this letdown, this, this impossibility, maybe the trials in your life, maybe financially, you're at a place where you think that nothing else, there's no options. Maybe there's struggles with a son or a daughter that there's no, it seems that there's no return there's no hope for him there's no hope for her maybe there's something in your life that you've been asking for that seems impossible let me remind you tonight there is nothing impossible for God Amen. and lastly por último God always calls us to be obedient even through the trial Dios nos llama a ser obedientes aún en medio de la prueba Listen here, through this miracle, through this miracle, a través de este milagro, the Lord, all he had to do is think it. As a matter of fact, one, one preacher said one day that when he called out Lazarus, he had to say Lazarus because if not everyone in that tomb, everyone would rise up that day. But the Lord, he was doing the miracle, and in that moment of miracle, he involved others. He said, 
move the stone. And he said, Martha, where did you put him? And, he, and when he gets there, he says, now, uh, t- you know, take out his bonds. And, 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 and he involved others. He, he got people involved in the miracle. And that tells me that even in the trials, even in the difficulties, we have to stay faithful and do what we're called to do day in, day night. We still have to go soul winning. We still have to be faithful to our Sunday school class. We still have to go on the bus route. We still have to get up and teach that class. We still have to be tithers. We still have to be obedient because that's what God expects from us even when God changes our plans. Dios nos llama a ser obedientes aún cuando Él cambia nuestros planes. You know, I notice that when trials come, that's when typically as Christians we stop being obedient. We stop doing what we're supposed to do. I quit on God. And I say it to my shame. And I'm embarrassed to say it and confess it. I wish that day can come back. And I wish I would know hindsight what I know now. Had God, had my wife not been walking with the Lord, had my wife not grabbed a hold of the Lord in that difficult moment in time and came and told her husband, and I tell you, women preach, came and told her husband, listen, God still has plans for your life. I would not be here tonight. Because when God changes our plans, too many of us, Quit on God. That's when we most need to be obedient. Have you stopped doing what you're supposed to do because of your trials? ¿Usted ha dejado de hacer lo que es correcto por sus pruebas? Porque las dificultades. Cuando Dios cambia nuestros planes, es necesario ser fiel. When God changes our plans, it's necessary to stay faithful. With every head bowed, every eye closed, Father, please bless tonight's message. Help us to understand it and help us to heed it. Help us to put it in our hearts. Maybe we don't need it tonight, but there will come a time when you decide from one verse to the next to change our plans for your glory. And when that moment comes in time, Lord, please help us, Lord, to stay faithful. Help us to believe that you care. Help us to understand that you never arrive late. Help us, Lord, to understand that there's nothing impossible for you. Help us to see things through your eyes and not our own. And help us to stay faithful, even through the trials. Let's all stand. The altar's open. Why don't you come and pray? That's why we have an altar, to come and pray and talk to God here. Maybe tonight you've been questioning God's love for you, God's care for you. Maybe you've been upset with God about something. He knows where you are. He knows what you're dealing with. And he loves you. Don't be angry at God. Don't be bitter at God. Love God. Tell Him you love Him right now. If you're here tonight and you don't know for sure that if you were to die that you would go straight to heaven 
The Bible says you can know that. You don't have to hope you're going to heaven. You don't have to guess at it. You can know it. We're all sinners. We all deserve hell. But Jesus died for sinners. And he shed his blood to pay for your sins on Calvary's cross. If you're here tonight, you don't know you're going to heaven. If you're a lady, Rebecca's down here to my right. You could step out from where you are and come to her. She'll take her Bible and show you from the Bible how to be saved. Saved from your sins. Saved from hell. If you're a man and you don't know you're going to heaven, it would take some courage, but God would help you. Step out and come. Jason's to my left. He's right down here at the front. If you come to where he is, he'll take his Bible and show you from the Bible how you can know you're going to heaven from the scriptures, from the Bible. You have God's word on it. You can trust God tonight. You do not have to go through life just hoping you're going to heaven. You can know you're going to heaven. If you need to be saved, you ought to come right now and trust Christ. If you're struggling with addictions or stubborn habits, we have a Bible-based program called RU, Reformers Unanimous. They meet on Friday night and also on Sunday morning. Brother Joel Patterson standing there at the back. And you could see him at the Welcome Center right after the service, and he can talk to you about the RU program, and you can get help. On Saturday morning, our team witnessing and bus visitation is at 10 a.m. in the main, I'm sorry, main lobby on Thursday, but on Saturday morning in the gymnasium. And so if you'd like to go out and tell people about the Lord, just show up here on Saturday. We're going to sing a verse of 481 till the storm passes by. Then we'll close in prayer. I maybe found that message helpful tonight, right? Oh, my. We needed that. Sing it out. In the dark of the midnight Have I oft hid my face While the storm howls above me And there's no hiding place In the crash of the thunder Precious Lord, hear my cry Keep me safe Till the storm passes by Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever From the sky Hold me fast and let me stand The storm passes. I appreciate the preacher being transparent tonight. That Saturday night moment. That's kind of like what Brother Malucci was talking about on Sunday when he said he could handle it when it was stuff going his direction, but then somebody messed with his kids. You know, when your kids are going to bed hungry, put yourself in those shoes and in that moment, think about that. That's when the devil will come in your weak moment. He'll try to get you to doubt. Sing verse 2 together. Many times Satan whispered, 
There is no need to try, for there's no end of sorrow. There's no hope by and by, but I know Thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise where the storm never dark. Sing verse 3 together, verse 3. And when the long night is ended and the storms come no more, let me stand in thy presence on that bright, peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. Sing it out now. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand. Till the storm passes by. Well, I got encouraged tonight. I know a bunch of you did. It's great to look in the Bible, people just like us who had their moments where you just got to trust the Lord. And I love that point. I think it was number four or five in there where we know God can do the impossible. With God, all things are possible. We're going to close in prayer and um, looking forward to the couple's retreat over the next couple of days here and excited about that. We'll be here in the morning, 10 a.m. Coffee and Donuts is here at the church. So if you're attending the couple's retreat, we'll meet you here in the morning. Father, thank you for the privilege of being in prayer meeting tonight. Lord, so many requests, so many things on hearts this evening. And I pray you would hear and answer according to your will. Help us to pray believing. Help us to pray with faith. Lord, I do pray for Preacher Sexton. I pray you would help him, and I pray you'd heal him, and I pray you'd raise him up, give him grace. Lord, so many in our church dealing with all different things tonight. I pray you'd minister grace. Lord, I pray for the Russos that they'd have a wonderful time here. I pray for the Gomez's that you bless them, bless their dear families at home, watch over and protect them. I pray for the couple's retreat, that it would be sweet, and you give everybody what they need. Be with the young people of our church, and be with our church family. We thank you so much for how you care for us. We pray in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name, and all God's people said,